it's a different shirt but the same day which I actually think defeats the purpose of changing if I say that. <laughs> the illusion is broken. I sometimes get comments and I sometimes see this on Facebook groups where people don't really get it what's up with Hoyas. They all look the same. Someone wrote all of their leaves look like bay leaves. I'm gonna tell you right now, go see an eye doctor because if you think that all Hoya leaves look like bay leaves, you got an issue. So I decided to make a video showing 10 or 11, did I count? I didn't count. A number of Hoyas that are unique and uncommon and I think all of them are a little bit different and I could have picked quite a few Hoyas that kind of look similar but are really unique in a way, but I didn't. I actually wanted to give a nice variety, kind of a bit for everyone in this video, and all of this just to prove to people that they are wrong, because I'm certainly not wrong. I don't like being wrong. I'm not gonna admit that I'm wrong. And that's a, probably a separate issue that we're not going to discuss today. I think I also forgot to say like, hello, my name is Miro and welcome to the channel. And if you're first time here, make sure to subscribe. I'm going to convince you though with more, with more passion that you should get some of these Hoyas and that there is a variety of Hoyas. I'm, I'm more persuasive in that field than in, in, in the subscribing to the channel field aspect, whatever. Also, a lot of this hate is coming from people who are really, like, into aeroids and, like, really? Because a lot of people cannot tell the difference between Hoya Edens... That's not a Hoya. <laughs> a lot of people cannot tell the difference between Monstera Edensoni and Monstera at Skeleto or, you know, Oblica. So, really, are those that vastly different? I mean, yes, I know they are. To me, they are, but, like, to the common folk. But if I show some of these Hoyas to the common folk, they are going to see the difference. They're not even going to think they're Hoyas. So think about that. Also, Dean McDowell and Pestazanum. Think about that. Think about that. Not to talk about different forms of Monstera Delicios. So let's start with something that's perhaps a little bit out there. It's not a Hoya for everyone. And I think that's because, you know, it's a departure. It's a significant departure on what Hoya should be. So first plant is... Hoya spartioides. Yeah, see, all Hoyas look the same. They don't. Hoya spartioides is a Hoya that consists only of peduncles. So all of these are peduncles. And we actually do have some buds here at the end of this peduncle. I actually had this Hoya in bloom. So I will show you what that looks like. They are very pretty, the flowers. And they don't last for a very long time, but if you expose this Hoya to a nice amount of light, she will bloom very frequently for you. She has been blooming pretty much constantly in my Mars Hydro grow tent under FC3000 grow light. That is a 300 watt light and it's dimmed to about 25%. Now this plant is about 70 centimeters away from the light and you can see that she is not really even sun stressed. I have seen some photos online that show Hoya spartioides red, which really looks like a sun stressed Hoya spartioides, but I do think there might be a difference between the clones because again, this one is exposed to quite high light in my opinion, and that light is more than enough to sun stress some other Hoyas, but this one does not seem to be bothered at all. But from what I can tell, this plant really enjoys the high humidity in the grow tent. It is about 85% of humidity in there and 24 degrees of Celsius and under the highlight. I think those conditions are really great for this plant. She actually grew several peduncles. I don't know if I have footage from when I received it, but I think she grew at least three peduncles in my care. You know, it's not the fastest growing Hoya, but it's very, very interesting. I actually like it a lot. It's also not a Hoya that produces a massive root system. You can see we have some roots there, but nothing major. I got this from Betsy in July of 2022. It was already a rooted plant, but again, not a lot of roots. And I don't think I will even attempt to cut this Hoya to propagate it. I just don't think it's worth it. It's a Hoya that's around 80 euros for a small plant with, you know, several peduncles. You were, you're not gonna get it with leaves. And I just don't think it's worth it to, to risk it. I don't know how it's gonna react. Is it gonna root? What, what happens with the base of the plant? I'm sure it's all doable. We had to 
have gotten it somehow, right? But I just don't think that will be something that I will do. I think also probably if you're gonna buy this plant, I would really recommend to get a rooted plant that's slightly bigger. So maybe a bit smaller than this. This is not very big but smaller than this. I think you can find smaller than this because I just don't think trying to get a cutting of this is worth it. I don't know. I think that would be a big risk. But it's a very different plant. And if you like something like Hoya retusa, Hoya insularis, I think you will love this plant. I just think it is very, very nice. These uh, peduncles are really long, grass-like. They usually have three, four, or five flowers. It really depends but very, very pretty. There is a similar plant that looks like this, but that one actually has leaves, and that is Hoya Retrosa, and that one is something that I still need to get. So tell me that all Hoyas look like bay leaves. Is this how a bay leaf looks like? I don't know, you tell me. I think the next one can be something a little bit more normal. Not that you are not normal, she's normal, she's okay. This is Hoya Wang Vieng Gensis. Hoya Wang Vieng Gensis NS07202, I believe, is the accession number. This is also, in my opinion, a very unique Hoya, and the reason for that is because, first of all, it is pubescent, and that's not the unique part. The unique part comes to how these leaves are. They are very thick, very succulent. They have very interesting veining that is prominent, but it's not like Hoya Calistophila. You can see actually on this leaf, I don't know why this leaf is so big, but I'm living for it, literally living for it, want more of this. You can see on that leaf the best, how that looks like. It's very beautiful veining, has some dimpling there. It's a gorgeous Hoya, again, it is pubescent, but it's quite rough. I do have some yellowing there on the leaves. So I think we had some spider mite -ish. Oh, shit. Okay, that was a bit scary. I don't really know how that happened. We have several peduncles actually on this plant, but I do think we had a bit of mites because again, there is some yellowing on those leaves towards the petiole, but I did treat it and I think she should be okay. Hoya Vang Viangiensis is said to not be the easiest Hoya to bloom. It has very beautiful white flowers, but for me, it really is the leaves. I do not have a Hoya in my collection that looks like this. And I don't think when you look at this, obviously you will see from this that it is a Hoya. There is no doubt. You're not going to think it's something else. But it's like, you know, when you compare to your standard Hoyas, like Carnosa, Australis, Bella, I think this one looks just different. It really stands out. It's really pretty. For me, it has been easy to grow. She did grow quite a lot. Someone also said that it's not easy Hoya to grow, that they only got a couple of leaves in a year. I didn't. I got quite a few leaves and... It's actually, I think, a year old now at this point. Yep, and I cut it, I think, two or three times already to sell a couple of cuttings from this plant. So she's doing really well, and she's now growing in the tent. And also, under high light, she produced a lot of leaves. I do recommend this Hoya. I don't think this Hoya likes to be watered a lot. That is something that I can agree with. Um, it is in cocoa peat and pumice uh, this time. Pumice, perlite, and cocoa peat. So it's a very airy mix. She seems to be doing well, and some people say this is a true epiphytic plant, so that it would like a very barky mix. For me and for my conditions, this seems to really work. Plus, you know, when I say it has pumice, I'm very heavy with, with adding stuff like pumice and perlite, so it's probably like a really good epiphytic mix anyways. Next way I would like to show you is Hoya Sulawesiana. Hoya Sulawesiana is something that I did struggle with a lot. Well, not a lot. It's not, it's not been a terrible struggle, but she did not grow since I got it. But it's a very beautiful, very unique Hoya, in my opinion. You can see those leaves are perfect. They are red. They have this... You know, pumice does not grow on trees. It has this very nice red leaf under higher light. And you can see some veining there. It's a very, very tough leaf. I think these are probably one of the toughest Hoya leaves, at least in my collection. They just don't budge when you, when you, when you touch them. It's a... Amazing Hoya. Amazing Hoya. It is really one of my favorite Hoyas. I am really sad that it didn't start to grow, and that's because it had root rot. I had to remove almost all the roots, and I keep the reservoir empty at this point. And you can see she has made some nice roots at this point. This is impure pumice now, 
and she seems to prefer that much more than the previous situation, which was pawn. I just see that the roots are doing really well. I mean, they're just grabbing onto that pumice. So definitely not something that you want to overwater. So be careful with that. Thankfully, I caught it on time, so there was no stem rot, but this is a really unique Hoya. This leaf is also like very long. It's a very, very nice, very long leaf. They will be deep green, but again, in higher light, they do get to be very beautiful red. This is Hoya Waliki subspecies tenebrosa. This is a thin-leaved Hoya. Nothing to write home about when it comes to the leaves. They're nice, nice, healthy-looking green leaves. Okay, I'll admit this one maybe looks like a bay leaf, whatever. But what makes this Hoya unique is the flower. It is a gorgeous, dark red flower. It's one of the most beautiful flower Hoya flowers that I have had. I adore it. It bloomed very, very early on for me. This plant I got in July of 2022, and it had to recover from a heat wave in the shipping, and it bloomed as early, I would say, as October. And the flower was stunning. I did not smell anything, and you can see that I underwatered it. We lost a couple of leaves there. That's fine. This Hoya, again, is uh, something that would probably prefer to be in a self-watering pot. And I assume that is why she lost a couple of leaves. It's in a small tent that's above my two tents, so I neglect that place a bit. The leaves are also not ugly. Don't get me wrong, they're not ugly, but you're not gonna pick this up for the leaves, you're gonna pick this up for the flower. Next plant, I adore. I adore this plant. I got this from Betsy, and I think she is unique. And when you see it, maybe you will be like, uh, really? But I think that Hoya Ivra Sherry, which is the next plant, first of all, it has a gorgeous name. Second of all, it has gorgeous leaves. And third of all, it has a gorgeous flower. So shut up. That's difficult to see, perhaps. So this Hoya has long leaves, but it's a thin-leaved Hoya. I find that very interesting. There are Hoyas out there that are, you know, with long leaves that might have the similar vibe, but I don't think you will find many Hoyas that have long leaves and they are thin-leaved Hoyas. They're just so super delicate, like you can see how easy it is to bend them. Very, very pretty. Very, very pretty plant. I just adore it. I adore it on a trellis. I grew it as a hanging plant for a moment, but I think it will just be nice when it fills out this trellis. And it does not produce a super huge root system anyways. It's do for a repot, but I think it's just a very pretty plant. I cannot wait to see her bloom and fill out this trellis. In my opinion, it really stands out from the rest of the Hoyas. I understand this is not the look for everyone. I know that a lot of people, when they look at Hoyas, they really look at, you know, the veins and the leaves. They want that, or splash, or variegation, or silver, and I do understand those. But there is something when I see something beautiful and delicate like Ivor Sherry. It's also not very difficult to care for, very fast to grow. I also have had this since July, I believe, and it has done really well. I do need to water it though, so sorry. Sorry, girl. We're gonna get to that. So something, again, a little bit different for the thickly lovers. This is Hoya rigidifolia. Hoya rigidifolia is, in my opinion, a super unique Hoya. Again, very different from the rest of the Hoyas. And this one does have inner variegated version. There is a splashy version, and there are several clones out there that they look a bit different. The leaves can look longer or wider, and the veining can be a bit more prominent or not. I just got mine as Hoya rigidifolia, so I don't really actually have any info on the clone. But the leaves, again, very thick, very nice. You can bend these a bit. They're not as thick as Hoya Sulaviziana, at least not in my plant, but again, very different, very different look. So as you can see, it has that middle vein that is very prominent, and then it has these veins on the edge. It looks like the edge is a bit offset. And there are veins that go across the leaf, which I'm not sure if we will catch in this light. Maybe we will, maybe we won't. It's always a mystery. But some of the clones also have more prominent veining like that. It flowers similar to Hoya Callistophila or Finlaysoni or Clemenciorum, in my opinion. Very similar to that, but it's still a very pretty plant. And I think it's definitely very unique. Again, I don't think you will find something like this necessarily. I mean, when you look at these two, 
completely different worlds, at least in my opinion. <laughs> Definitely a Hoi that I think you should have. Also, the leaves can potentially get longer. Mine is in fairly high light. It's again one of the Hoi's that grows in my grow tent. So I think it can get longer with the leaves, uh, but also it could be a clone thing. So you potentially need to get a couple of, I mean, I will definitely get a couple of clones of this plant just to verify. It's purely for scientific purposes. The next Hoya is something that I think maybe more of you will enjoy. It's not so much out there, but it's very pretty. And I think again, very unique for several reasons. And this is Hoya Denisi Frida. It's just so pretty. She is so pretty, so pretty, so pretty, you're so pretty. She seriously blows my mind. I mean, look at that. It is gorgeous. She's beautiful. She's absolutely beautiful, and I will tell you why. First of all, obviously the variegation is very nice. The flowers on Hoya Denisi are also one of the prettiest flowers you will see in Hoya. They are just amazing. Unfortunately, we have not bloomed, but we have given Miro a lot of new growth, and you can see she keeps going. She is a really fast Hoya. And one of the reasons why I also find this very unique, aside from the variegation, I think the regular Denise is also very pretty. It's that veining. I don't know if you can catch that well, but the leaves look very beautiful. The veining is very nice. Almost, you almost think it's dehydrated, but it's not. It's just such a nice leaf. Very beautiful. Super fast grower. Beautiful blooms. Beautiful veining and beautiful variegation. The leaves can also get much bigger than this, I think, but mine, again, is in highlight and that usually dictates the size of the leaves. But she is not complaining when it comes to new growth. She is pushing out a lot of new growth and I, whether it's because of the light or not, I'm not sure. I think maybe it's just a plant that in any condition will probably do really well. I cannot wait for her to fill out this trellis. I don't even care about the blooms. I just want to see her fill out the trellis. Does not look like bay leaf, does not look like carnosa, nor australis, nor anything else. It's a plant on its own. It's a gorgeous Hoya Denisi Frida. This wacky one is Hoya acicularis. Let's hope she's not stuck. Let's hope she's not stuck. Ooh, she's not stuck. So I don't know how well we can see that. It's a bit difficult with the light and all of it. If you look at this plant from the back, from, from the distance, you may think it's Hoya linearis. However, when you get closer to it, you see it's completely different. It's completely different. The leaves are very, very thick. They are not pubescent like Coilinearis. The stem is also not pubescent. It does not have that messy look, at least for now. My plan does not have that messy look of Hoyeratusa that some people dislike. And I think you could potentially even trellis this to look nicely. I don't know how well it would grow. This is a plant that I got in November of 2021 from Camilla. So it is a bit slower in the beginning. It's actually now taking off in the grow tent. And I don't know if it's the higher light or higher humidity or maybe just needed more time to root, or maybe we had mites, but it just was not growing so fast in the beginning. And I think, you know, it's probably a combination. It's usually a combination of reasons and, you know, the lack of watering. I'm not a big fan of this part, but you know, we can, we can look at it in two ways. We can say it gives a unique look, which is what, what I chose to do. Or we can say reroot it, Miro, but I don't think I will because it's, again, it's growing so well and so fast and I don't even think that I can manipulate it because it's very, very rigid at this point. But it's a super pretty plant. If you're into something like this, you will love Hoya acicularis if you don't already have it. I even had people who don't really like Hoyas comment that they would really like this one, that it looks very nice. And it does. It really does. It's kind of like Linearis crossed with Wayeti, I guess, or maybe Shepardi, because it's that type of thickness, but it's a narrow leaf. And I actually think it's growing much better for me since I started to water it a bit more regularly. I did not expect this plant to want so much water, so I didn't really water it too much, but it, I think she's actually doing much better now. A very, very unique Hoya, again. Doesn't look like a bay leaf, doesn't look like a Carnosa. Looks very different, very pretty, and I just think, if you think Hoyas are boring, well, look at that, not boring at all. We can argue that it's not pretty to you, but that's a different thing. We have two more plants, and again, this one is something that is 
underwater right now, so I'm sorry. It's a plant that I got from Germany from Peter, and it's Hoya species Rinduraflasia. It's a very beautiful plant, but as you can see, it's not supposed to be like this. It's supposed to be a bit more succulent. So we are, uh, you know, underwatering her a bit, and she needs to be repotted to a bigger pot very quickly. She actually bloomed recently for me, and I think she bloomed a couple of times. She is not a big fan of my trellising, so we'll see about that. Why I wanted to show you this plant is because when people catch a glimpse of this plant in the videos, they are always impressed. They are impressed by the leaves. I think you can see why. The leaves are very big. In This, this has grown probably in lower light because my leaves are a bit smaller, but they're very narrow, very long, and they have very prominent veining that gets a bit reddish in higher light. But I will show you some of the newer leaves. This one did burn a bit, and I'm not really sure actually how, but it's probably me. But you can see how unique they look. Very pointy, very nice. So this is actually unpublished species. I don't think this will be grouped with other species. I think it's very unique, but I don't really know when we can expect it to be published. I think this is a favorite for a lot of people, and you can tell why. The flowers are gorgeous, and they last for a couple of days. They actually take a bit to open. Mine were not fully open for, um, I think, two or three days. But once they are, they're really looking nice. I love everything about it. I It does seem to want quite a lot of water, actually. Because what I usually do with my hoyas in my grow tent, I water them once a week. and. This has been watered last weekend, and now it's Thursday, or actually it's Wednesday, and it's already dry. But I, again, I think that's because, um, you know, it's because we are stuck and we have a lot of... Ooh, oh wow. Okay, well that makes sense. Never mind. I know why she needs more water. Um, I think this is the reason why this plant drinks the water in, in, in two days or three days. Do you think, I, I think maybe this is why? I actually watered it before I started this video, so that's why the roots are a bit wet, but I mean, I think, I think we got our answer. How are we gonna repot though? In the last way I find to be very unique, very beautiful, is Hoya Fauziana. And I find Hoya Fauziana to be very beautiful because of its flower. However, the leaves are very nice too. Like, she's very nice. I'll show you. This one needs to be trellised. <laughs> oh shit, and we pot it. I'm just gonna ignore that. The leaves are so soft. They are very similar to the touch, like Hoya ruthiae, or like Hoya scortechini. Uh, Hoya scortechini is very succulent, this one is not. But they're just so nice to the touch, and so beautiful. They have some splash on them. They can get very big. Uh, some of mine are very small because of the light, but I'm gonna show you how beautiful those leaves are. This is a plant that I got from Betsy in July. I'm actually surprised how fast it's growing. And I think this one is a bit more on the uncommon side. I do have one leaf that looks super pretty. Oh, it's this one. <laughs> it's a funky leaf. It's a weird shape, but it looks super pretty with a splash. I don't know if we can see that. It's gorgeous. She grew quite a lot. If I just put her on my desk, you can see. It's a nice size. You can see more of those beautiful leaves. We have a new one coming in, so you can see that too. So a bit uh, of a change in color there, and this one is coming in with some splash as well. When you turn the leaf in the light, you can kind of see the sheen on the leaf, if the camera picks up on that. I think it's like a very sophisticated Hoya. That's that's what I would call it. I actually have both. I have Hoya fosiana and Hoya fosiana subspecies ungulata. I have that one from Julie Kennedy. That one is a bit different, a wider, bigger leaf. I would say I prefer this leaf, but the flowers on both look fantastic and I am so happy to have both. I don't think you will regret if you get this plant. That is all for today. I hope that you enjoyed the video and seeing some of these on common hoys. Now what I want you to do is I want you to write in the comments below what do you think is the most unique hoya and if some of you want to share what is your sentiment 
you know, about this Hoya hate that we have, that Hoyas all look the same or they are boring, feel free to leave those thoughts down below so, you know, show the Aeroid people that we have the voice too. I mean, Aeroids are nice, but like, I'm not shaming them. Please don't look at the previous videos because I might actually have, but like just a little bit, a little bit. All in all, I think all of these that I showed today are very unique and I think you should really find something here for you. I think, again, a lot of these you probably already have. I expect most of you to have a, a lot of them. Maybe not all of them. Actually, I actually would like to know if you have some of these plants and if one of these made it to your wish list after watching this video. If you like the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, I will help you find it. It is right below the video and it's like big subscribe. Click on it. I'm gonna do the trick. I'm gonna do the trick. Have a wonderful week and I will see you very soon in another Hoya video. Goodbye! I would like to take some time to thank my patrons. A massive shout out to my $5 patrons. My three anonymous patrons, Alex von Siebenthal, Anne Margaret Mon, Angela Bernard, Angela Parrish, and C, Ashley Hoyas, Beth Gibson, Betsy Begonia, Danube Daniels, Daria Kaminska, Diane Sikorsky, Farah, Gina Geisig, Go Green Tropical, Houseplant Heather, Hoya Heather, Yana Griffin, Jessica Chio, Kayla Vavra, Kelly Koo, Kelso, Kristen Sherwood, Laplan De Steph, Mandy Milliken, Mars B, Martina, Alif Perde, Marty Miller, Melissa Walker, Nicole Ferranti, Mirka Grun Roos, Neely Yang, Nicole Moreau, Nicole and Caleb of Schleif Tropicals, Nita Macy, PJ, Robin L. Jennings, Sherry Kumar, Stephanie H2O, Stephanie Zeely May, Sybil Williams, Tanya, Tessa Martins, The Swedish Hoya Noob, TJWO, Wendy, Wendy Foreman, Wendy Rossman, and Zlokov Nipponi. Also, a big thank you to my $3 patrons Angelina Farnan, Anne Margaret, Anna K, Brenna B, Brianna Phillips, Kilone, Christina Greengrass, Claudia L, Fluffy Blue Sheep, Jerry's Garden, Lisa Helling, Morgan Kennedy, Nella, Nerdy Kathy, Plan. Druid, Plantalania, Ringlov, and Tang Watana Sriakul. Also, a thank you to my $1 patrons, Brandon Pacheco, Kari, Kerry, Constance, Jacinta, Jolie Sullivan, Lauren M, Lori Ann Subramaniam, Luzman Fernandez, Neely Spicer, Olivia Chin Muller, and Paula Plants. Thank you all so much for incredible support. I hope that you enjoyed watching this video and I hope that I gave you some good suggestions of unique Hoyas that you can add to your collection. Have a wonderful weekend, stay safe, and I will see you soon.